Uh, good morning, Office Me again, Teddy Safarian. We talked yesterday about uh, Jason Dorsonville, who you guys have denied. Um, I'm under the impression I'll be getting a call back. I haven't received it yet. I know you guys are busy, but we're just, we're really running out of time. And uh, as far as New York is concerned, he's gonna end up being released into a homeless shelter where, quote unquote, nobody really makes it. And I, you know, again, I have uh, years and tons of money invested in this man's future and a home and a bed and a job for him and it just seems like there's something that we could do here. Um, if nothing else, please call me back so I know what I can do uh, in New York because I have to start making some moves which may actually end up me moving myself and my business um, out of Nevada because I, I, I have to help this person. To send your message now, press 1. To mark it as important, This week, this week is not a uh, not a normal week. Very stressful few days. I don't even know like where to begin. There's so much I could talk about. I don't really censor myself, but given the situation, there's certain things that I'm not going to talk about, and they don't matter. It's or what's being reinforced to me by the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, that I could be my own worst enemy by reacting emotionally and uh, like losing my shit. Like I want to do, you know what I mean? Of course I want to lash out. I guess I'm not surprised. I'm angry, you know? Like I'm angry that the system works the way that it does. So there's so many things to be angry about and there's so many things to talk about and none of it is gonna do any good because it doesn't actually solve any of our problems. So there has been some bad news um, or at least news that we did not foresee coming even though I think we probably thought that it couldn't have been as easy as it was looking you know like the last couple of months hands have been up like I don't know what the fuck is happening you know they're supposed to come inspect my house they're supposed to come look at all this shit come interview me they're supposed to do all this stuff and they haven't done it three days away from his release four days away four days he gets out me and Ern fly out of here Monday Monday morning. I essentially have um, the next two days here, which I've been all week painting. So the next two days I'm gonna finish up the paintings and we did a drop and face mask and all that, everything's shipping, just like regular business stuff. But this has been thrown into the loop. So I haven't even gotten to the point yet, which the point is, is that, what's today? Friday. So on Tuesday, I kind of got the vibe that things were not going well. Nothing really confirmed it. I just couldn't get anybody to call me back. Couldn't get in touch with anybody. They were switching operators and it was just like, getting weird you know I got a vibe once nobody called me back pressing them and pressing them and pressing finally I talked to an officer and I basically discovered that they were gonna deny uh, deny a request to have Jay transferred here what it's called is an interstate compact so they don't have to approve what an interstate compact is it's an agreement between all 50 states that can trade off trade off human beings because as prisoners and uh, you know basically what Nevada has to say is like we will we will supervise him whatever with probation and they're saying no uh, right now because but they also are supposed to, from my understanding, do the whole interview process, come out here, do all the shit I'm talking about. They never did that. They just straight up nonchalantly on the phone said, oh yeah, that was not approved. And the only way they have to have to approve it is if we're family. We're not family. This family's not necessarily in the best position to help him and this is basically the same cycle that he's already been in and it's not gonna fucking change if we don't do something. So, that's not enough insult for injury because you think like, all right, plan doesn't work. Like, he could just go to his mom's house. His mom lives in Kingston where me and Ern met where like all this started. He's like, he can go stay at his mom's, like it's cool. That's not the case. That's not what, at least that's not what they have on the paperwork for when he gets released. And what they have on the paperwork for when he gets released is for him to go stay in a fucking homeless shelter. Hopefully, you know, maybe something will change before then. I have zero faith in that. As of right now, uh, they are releasing him. We're gonna pick him up, but we have to go check in, you know, D DSS and go to the parole office and all these things, but they are going to place him by default in a homeless shelter. The most painfully ironic fucking bullshit. The, the justice system, that they, like a, a system is a system and without people, the system is nothing. But the people, a person, and my hope is that a person or people will see this, 
illustrated in front of them, not here necessarily, but in person, like when we get to New York, that this person has an opportunity of a lifetime in Nevada or wherever I am, wherever I decide to be, you know, but at currently Nevada, that we have something we can build here, only gets in trouble in New York, and for them to keep him for another five years is just, well, he would have to be at the homeless shelter by curfew, which is like 8 p.m. If he's not there by 8 p.m., he violates... Uh, violation of probation can send you right back to jail for those of you that do not know. So, it's a basically it's a trap. I mean, it's 100% a trap. Have any doubts in your mind that the uh, homeless shelter is not a cesspool of bullshit? You, my friend, are probably ignorant to like what is happening because it's going to be going to be not very far from prison. I mean, the only difference is during the day he's going to get to go outside. You know, like we can go f- make moves and figure shit out and oh we can get food you know but it's like it's real hard not to look at it and go okay so you're gonna release someone who has a home a job and a plate a bed a whole room his own fucking bathroom for god's sakes and you're gonna go make him stay in a homeless shelter i mean he's gonna have a suitcase full of clothing a playstation extra shoes all this stuff but he's gonna have to go stay in a homeless shelter does that it doesn't that doesn't make sense and then that homeless shelter like it's not like you can just hang out there all day you know it's not like he's gonna be able to plug the playstation in at the homeless shelter and get down on Fortnite. No, sir. You have to go out there in the day and look for a job. I mean, there's a pandemic, you know? Even when there wasn't a pandemic, going out to look for a job on foot usually leads to not a great place, especially for a felon who just got out of jail. I don't know what these people do, like, when they watch documentaries and shit and they, like, see how (laughs) justice is not being served and it's being overlapped by red tape and fucking bureaucratic bullshit, I guess. I have faith that this is gonna work out in the end. But again, the fact that we have to fight is insane. It's insane that it's not cut and dry. Like, this dude has been paying for and mentoring this man for the last seven years from day even before he was living with me in Colorado and he wasn't the best situation but he wasn't getting in trouble he wasn't arrested so it's it's progress he gets arrested in New York so it's like amazing that people can't see won't even take the time to look and consider investment in his future which I have no return on other than his success it sucks you know what I mean like this is a now a battle like it's like gonna be a fucking battle try to get this um, situated and I don't know how long it's gonna take and I don't know how much effort it's gonna take and money you know I think we just we thought we were at the top of this thing and we thought that this was over or coming to an end of like actual rehabilitation and like fixing life and where we just for, forgot the pitfalls of probation like probation is a trap like it is 100% a trap it is to get you to try to fuck up again <laughs> it works against you your time doesn't count towards you know anything you could be on probation for five years three years fuck up and then go back to one and it needs to be changed but that doesn't do me any good to say that because it's not like I can actually change it all I can do is advocate for this one person this one situation is which what we're going to do I'm going to New York I have no clue how long I'm going to be there Ern's only going to be there for a couple days he's got to get back and unless there's just like nothing that can be done if I we exhaust all options and, and what can be done then you know I mean maybe I'll come home for a second and you know possibly that I come home grab my car and drive back if I need to be there for a longer period of time just figure figure out what we can do to put him in the best situation because it is absolutely insane to me that they think it's a good idea. I don't even know how there's room in a homeless shelter, doc. Like, I don't understand, like, during coronavirus how this is even possible. This, this leads to so many underlying issues. I'm not even the one going through it. Like, the fact that it's such a confidence crusher, man. Like, dude dude does all this time to get out and dodges all the pitfalls of prison, which we also don't address as a society. We make jokes about it. We think it's so funny, you know, ha ha ha, you know. Uh, prison jokes, body blah, blah. We don't, we don't actually address that we're inhumane as fuck. It's cool, you know what I mean? Enjoy, enjoy your pear bread. It's fucking nuts. There's a lot of things that need to get addressed, and this shit is fucked. And people can say, don't do the fucking crime if you can't do the time. And I can say, the time needs to match the fucking crime, and we can't call things a correctional facility if we're not actually correcting things. Be honest about what we're actually doing, because a lot of this seems like it's for money. And if it weren't for parolees and prisoners and uh, this system of probation there would be a lot of money lost a lot of jobs in the system lost that's just like what it is i'm not blowing your mind with anything new and this is not a joe rogan podcast so do your own research definitely emotional couple of days and i'm just wrapping my head around this new 
I don't even know what you call it. I'm so distracted. This new obstacle. Jay, surprisingly enough, is in pretty good spirits. Like, he's absolutely bummed the fuck out. I told him we're not going to skip over uh, achievements, you know, and it's still a huge achievement to get free, to get out of that situation without getting more time, without getting any new fucking scars on your body. So it's like, well, I don't know if that's true. He's out, you know, like, as soon as he gets out, we can go get a fucking cheeseburger. He's at a better place than he was. You know, and we just got to make sure that um, we put him in the best position to succeed. I don't really have any doubts that he's going to succeed. He's really excited about um, participating in the vlog and participating in podcasts. And he's like really excited about learning about editing. And this is what he kind of went, his schooling was radio broadcast stuff. That's the interest that he has. So, and honestly, the idea for the vlog came from Jay. Jay used to like fly. He's like, I'm going to start some website and I'm going to just like post up these videos. I'm like, what are you going to do on those videos, Jay? It'll be all annoying. Just post talk about my life and shit. I'm like, what are you talking about? What, what do you mean? He's like, I don't know. I'm just gonna talk about sports and music and whatever's going on. And I thought he was crazy. And here we are. I mean, I've had some friends that I've even argued with this week, you know, who don't understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I don't really have to explain it. If, if I have to explain it to you, then it's just like your issue. Like I can't explain my perspective on like what it means to me. So I'm gonna help as much as I can. And I'm certainly not gonna turn my back on my fucking friend. Um, at the at the end, it was because I thought it was the end, and it's not the end. Um, it's still the goal. We're still gonna figure it out. It's just gonna be a uh, it's gonna be a harder road ahead. Probably a frustrating one, and I don't want to say humbling because it's not gonna be humbling. It's probably gonna be infuriating just because some things uh, are just so broken. That's just how I feel about it. So. But yeah, so, and uh, like really honestly, like when this all started, man, I was broke. When we, me and Ern decided to help Jay when he first got arrested, it was his own fault. He's a fucking idiot. We know this. We didn't have any money. You know, I just hustled until I could get enough money, pay lawyers. We did it together. Ern traded website work, got money. Like we just, we scrounged it together to try to help, which was really fruitless. You know what I mean? <laughs> We've been supportive since the beginning. And in a way, like, even though it may be some people like it's not deserved, like do stupid shit, pay the price for stupid shit, yada, yada, yada. Jay has a completely different story. You know, his, from the time that he's in high school, it's just been like chain reaction of bad shit and just no support. And I'm a firm believer that the support makes all the difference. I think that even just being there while he comes home is a, creates a completely different uh, mentality for him going into this, that he's just not alone. And I think that's, I think that that's huge. I think it's important because Jay's a great dude you know he's a great a great fucking guy you know and it took effort of a part to try to build something when Jay went away I said I'm gonna build something for us to have something for you to come home to because if you come home it's gonna be the same cycle which because I was trying to avoid all this seven years of my life has been kind of focused around this end goal which was supposed to be this week so earth shattering for me this week like I mean you just pull the rug right out from under me but it's okay because I'll get back up never knew where this was all gonna go I have no idea that um, I was going to end up making clothing that people like and that this is like what it would fund all this. We had no idea and it's and it's been pretty perfect. I mean, it, actually, it's been pretty fucking ridiculous. But uh, it has been great and I cannot express how thankful I am. I've had your support, uh, especially people who have bought merchandise and supported like the entire thing. You know, I've been sending Jay money this entire time. This is all going to cost a lot of money. It's going to continue to cost money and I'm going to continue to try to like create things and add value and give you things that you want, you know, and uh, I just really like from the, from the like depths of my goddamn soul, appreciate the support. Like even if you don't give a fuck about this situation, um, I just appreciate, I appreciate the help and, and help me build up a platform and um, the ability to make moves because without without this I wouldn't be able to help as much as I have even up to this point so I do appreciate it thank you and hopefully we get this all sorted out hopefully it all is for the best and um, either way we're headed to New York <laughs>